Hello developers, my name is Matt Rabel and today I'd like to show you how to create a bootiful web application using Spring Boot and Vue. So this is based on a blog post that I published earlier this week called Bootiful Development with Spring Boot and Vue. So it goes through and shows you how to build a beers API that has a list of beers and then it filters out the ones that aren't so great and only gives you a list of good beers. The GitHub repo for this is in the Okta developer org at spring boot view example and if you look in the Okta branch you'll find a demo script that I wrote that basically shows everything that we'll be doing today. It's written in ASCII doc but it renders just fine in markdown. If you look at the raw version and you have the ASCII Dr. J plugin installed, then you'll uh, you'll be able to see a screen that's very similar to mine. So let's get started. We'll put this on the left, and then we'll open up a terminal window. And one thing I would like to tell you is that the brackets at the end of each step indicate IntelliJ Live templates. So IntelliJ Live templates like Boot Entity Lombok will allow you to play back code that you've pre-recorded basically. And so all of these live templates are in my GitHub repo at mrabel slash idea live templates. And you can import these into your copy of IntelliJ and then basically do everything that I'm going to show you today. So we'll start with an alias. Normally you'd go to start.spring.io in your browser, but you can also use its REST API. And I have an alias called bootiful start. That will allow me to basically download an application that includes H2, Wambach, Data JPA, Data REST from Spring Data, and then Web, which is just Spring MVC. So we can create a new directory called Spring Boot View. Go into that and then unzip the demo.zip we downloaded into a server directory. And go into that server directory and open it up in IntelliJ. Now we can go to the demo application, which is one of the main classes. And you can create all the classes that I'm going to create in separate packages, or it's in, a, in its own package. But I'm choosing to do it just in the same package or the same file because it's a little bit easier to see everything then. So I'm going to start by creating an entity using Lombok, and we'll just call this beer. And you'll see it uses the data annotation which adds getters and setters and two string to this class no args constructor I could obviously just write that in one line as well down here choosing not to and then an ID and a name we'll also create a repository a spring data repository for it call this beer repository extends JPA repository and this repository rest resource will actually allow you to expose this repository as rest endpoints so that's great for demos maybe not so much in the real world but works nicely for what we're doing today and then I'll create a command line runner that puts a bunch of sample data into the database for us and then I'll add that sample data and this is from beeradvocate.com they say that these are some of the top six beers in the world based on user reviews and critics and things like that. So we've got some Kentucky Brunch Brand Stout and uh, King Julius Hetty Topper Marshmallow Hanji, a lot of those ones. And then we have ones that are widely considered not so great, and we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and filter those out. So just to show you what this looks like at the time being, we'll go ahead and start our application. Okay, so you can see that those beers were entered into our database, and now we could actually look at them if we went to the slash beers endpoint, but I want to create a good beers endpoint. So we'll do that with boot controller. You can see we have a beer controller there. It uses our repository. And we'll add a good beers endpoint that basically from that repository grabs everything, streams it, filters it through this isGreat method and sees if it is great and takes it out if it's not. 
and then returns that to the user. So we can restart. And now if we go to the Good Beers endpoint, you'll see it doesn't have Budweiser or PBR in there. We could also just go to Beers and hit that REST repository resource, and it has a more RESTful nomenclature and JSON that's returned. All right, we can also hit it as a REST API. So we can go ahead and use HTTPy8080, beers, and you'll see all those as well as good beers. And you could also add a new one. So you could do HTTP post. We'll add good old Guinness because it's good for you, even though I spelled it wrong. And then you could update it using HTTP put. And then you would specify the ID, so this is ID 10, and we could change the name to spell it right. And there we are, and then if we hit good beers, we'll see that it's actually in there. And then we can delete it as well, so HTTP delete, 8080 beers 10. Now it's gone. So you can see we have a full REST API at this point that's working and doing what we wanted it to do. So the next step is to create a view app, and I have view CLI installed for that, so view create client. Client is the name of my application. I'm going to manually select the features. I'm going to use TypeScript, because I like TypeScript, progressive web app support, and router. And then I'll accept the defaults for everything else, so class style component, yes. Babel, yes. History mode, yep. And TSLint, and We'll lint on save, and I'll put everything in its own configuration files. And then I won't set this as a preset, so I can always make this choice in the future. Okay, so now I'll open this up in IntelliJ. And you might notice that it recommended that I CD into the client and run npm run serve. Well, I'm the kind of person that doesn't really like to run three commands, but I don't mind running two, so I like to type npm start instead of three words. So I'm going to go back to IntelliJ, I'm going to open up package.json, and I'm going to make npm start work. So you can do that by just duplicating the serve command and putting start in there. And start is one of those commands or scripts from npm that allows you to run without two commands. Uh, test is another one as well as build. I think you have to run npm run build. So we, now we can do npm start and our app is running on 8081. So you can see this is the default welcome to your view plus TypeScript app. So the first thing we're going to want to do is modify home.view to call our beers API or good beers API. So in here we'll create a created method. This hooks into the view lifecycle and it'll be called when this component is created. You'll notice we need Axios, so npm i Axios to install it. And then we can import it. Import Axios from Axios. And we'll also create an interface for our beers, or a beer type, and it has an ID of number, has a name that's a string, and it has a Giphy URL. We'll go out to Giphy and get a fun image or an animated GIF that matches the beer name. And then we need a local variable to store the beers in, so private beers, that's a beer array, and we'll just initialize it to an empty array. And then up here we'll take out hello world and we'll go ahead and add a list of our beers. Beer list, give it a title of beer list and you'll see it loops through the beers that are set and it just displays their names. So for that to work right now you'll notice this actually calls a relative URL so it doesn't actually call 8080, it'll call 8081 good beers and we can use a proxy to proxy it to 8080. So to do that, you can create a view config.js. And 
And so in this one, we're actually specifying the port as 8081. The reason I'm doing that is because if you don't specify a port, it defaults to 8080. And we're using Spring Boot for that. But if we actually didn't and start Spring Boot first, then it would pick up that port and then Spring Boot would be blocked. So I'm just going to hard code it to 8081 here. And then I'm going to proxy that good beers endpoint or that call to 8080. So now I should be able to restart. And we should be able to see that list of beers in our browser. All right. So that's all working. The next step is to actually just move it into its own component. So we can create a new component. And I have a view plugin installed, which only really, you know, creates this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use the home template and just strip out everything that's relative to home. So we'll take out this part, we'll take out the logo, and we'll keep everything else in there. And then we'll go ahead and remove the hello world component because we don't need that. Delete it as an import. And then we'll rename this to beer list. And now we have our beer list standalone component. And we can go back here and basically revert it to what it was in the beginning. And then just add the beer list component here. And we don't need that whole world. And now everything should work just as before if I don't type Z in there. And then you'll notice it has a few TS Lint rules that makes it work like you want it to. So now if we refresh, everything still works, right? So we just move that into its own component and it's a little tighter and cleaner now. So the next thing is to actually have our Giphy component. So we'll create a new Giphy component called Giphy image. And just to walk you through this code, it starts with a class called Giphy image and we have a name prop that's passed in from a parent component and then a Giphy URL that we will set on each one. And so when the component is created, it calls the Giphy API and this API key here is recommended for demos. If you don't limit it to one, it'll actually bring back 25 by default. So that's a terrible performance thing if we're only going to show one. So then we use Axios to get that Giphy API, pass in the name of the beer, and then we get the response here. We check if there was any return because there might not have been any matches. And if there is any, then we just grab the first one. And then if not, we have a dancing cat. It's always fun to see a dancing cat. So there you are. And then the template up here will actually take that Giphy URL, use it as an image source, and Put an alt tag on it as well. So this vbind syntax, actually you don't need it. Um, you can use it if you want, but the colon is a shortcut for that. And then down here I just have a scoped style that only pertains to these images. So it just gives them a top margin of 10. So at this point we can go back to our beer list. We can actually use this component. And we'll specify the name equals beer. Dot name. And then you'll notice it added it right here, and view is a bit picky, the view CLI. They like to have commas on the end of things. Now everything's working, and you can see we're getting our images back. So, Kentucky Brunch Brand Stout, Marshmallow, all those. Kind of funny. And the next thing I'd like to show you is how to add PWA support. So it's already had it built in because we actually went ahead and, you know, added it when we created the app. So it's only enabled in production. So you have to do an npm run build to see that in action. And then you can use serve, point to the disk directory where it was created, and we'll run it on port 8081. Now we can go back to our client. We can refresh and you'll notice what the, like kind of confusing and it's very confusing that there's so many when, you know, we just have beers. So what's happening here is it's actually failing to talk to good beers. 
um, because we just have a relative URL for that. So we'll have to go back into our beer list and we'll have to make that into localhost 8080 because when you're running it using serve, it doesn't have that proxy configuration in its path, basically. So um, we'll also need to make cores work on the server. So you can do that with cross origin annotation from Spring. And then you can specify the origins as localhost 8081. And restart that. And then back to our client. We'll have to rebuild. And restart our server. And now if we refresh, everything should work as before. Nope, not quite. So this could be because it is a PWA and we need to clear it out of our browser. The old version, yep. So now you see it's got the, the latest version. And if you look in application and Chrome developer tools, you'll see the manifest with the information in there of the icons and how you might install this. If you click add to home screen, it'll actually prompt you and you could say like beers and it'll create an app in your Chrome apps folder. So that's pretty neat. Um, you can also look at the service workers and you can see that um, none of these boxes are checked. If you're doing development and have a service worker enabled, you might actually want to check update on reload or else it won't actually try to update it and you'll end up with stale data. And I'm going to try this offline and see if that works. This works like 50% of the time. You'll see it almost worked. It got the shell, but it didn't actually get the API call. So you might have to configure some things with PWAs in this uh, register service worker to actually make it so it goes out and caches that good beers call. But that's the service worker part. Um, you can also see it with Lighthouse. Test it with Lighthouse. And you'll see we get a pretty good score there, an 85. And the reason we don't do better is because down here we're not using HTTPS. And it doesn't redirect from HTTP to HTTPS. So if you deployed it to something like Heroku or Cloud Foundry, that could certainly work a lot better for you. So if you go to our Okta developer here and went to the GitHub repo, um, there's actually scripts for Cloud Foundry that shows how it builds the uh, client and the server and it basically goes through and replaces that localhost 8080 with whatever the server is deployed to. Same thing for the uh, the cores origin goes and replaces that in the server as well. So that's that's Cloud Foundry. There's one for Heroku too. Both of them work. I've tested them and when you do that you usually get a hundred score for being a PWA. I'd also like to show you that in the audits tab there's also Lighthouse embedded in Chrome. So you can use this and look at the different throttling things and see how you do when you run it there. Now I'm going to show you how to add authentication with Okta. So this is going to use OpenID Connect and so this should work with any OpenID Connect provider. So we'll go to our server first and we'll go ahead and add dependencies to the Maven com file. We'll add our Okta Spring Boot Starter. And we'll add a dependency for Spring's OAuth 2 support. And we'll make it match with what version of Spring Boot we're using, which is 2.1.1. And we'll import those. And then in Application Properties, I'll add my Okta settings. So it specifies the issuer and the client ID. So if I go to this tenant, this is where I've actually set my own application up on Okta. If you go to developer.okta.com and click on sign up, you can sign up and create your own as well. Um, but I can go to this URL since I've already signed up and log in with one password because I don't know any of my passwords. Log in, and then I could go to Applications. I could create a new application, single page app. 
go to next and call it like awesome view and I would change all these to 8081 and then click done and then on the next page you can copy that client ID so then we can go back to IntelliJ and we can put it right there and so I've already set it up um, I'm just going to use the one I already have configured but it's the same thing as the one I just created so now if we restart our Spring Boot API it should be protected and you should not be able to access it directly so if I go to localhost 8080 you can see it prompts me to log in so the reason that happened is because I forgot one crucial step and that is to make it into a resource server so you can add an annotation here called enable resource server restart and then what Spring Boot will expect or Spring Security actually is that a access token will be passed in and that will be the authentication or the authorization for the user so now if we just go to 8080 you'll see that full authentication is required to access this resource now we'll go back to our client and we'll add view the OctaView SDK so I have a shortcut for that it's just OctaView and you'll notice that installs the OctaView library as well as uh, types library for the TypeScript stuff this might eventually be distributed with OctaView so the second step that I have right here uh, might not be needed in a month or so and so now I can open up the router and you can see what this router does is it uses a base URL and it has a home route and an about route that uses lazy loading so I'm just going to replace this with one that's authentication aware you'll notice this is a difference right here we're using the OctaView plugin and we're specifying that same issuer a client ID and then a redirect URI to come back here as well as these scopes and then we have a link to our beer list and we tell it that it requires authentication and then we have this callback that uses the OctaView plugin and then before each specifies an auth redirect guard so if it has requires auth right here it'll redirect to Okta to log in and so now what we can do is we can take beer list out of home we can actually remove it from here and remove the import and now we can add a link in the beginning and we'll also make this class authentication aware so now it has still a link to home and about but if they're authenticated it shows them a link to the beer list and it also if they're authenticated shows them a logout button and they can click to log in with a login button and then in this class we're actually using auth which the OctaView plugin will put on all view classes and then we can check if they're authenticated this annotation is very important this watches for a change in the route and it calls this is authenticated method and then when they click logout it goes ahead and logs them out and resets that authenticated variable so now we should be able to restart the client and if we restart you notice we have a login button and it actually logged us in right and the reason that worked is because I already logged in to my Okta tenant if I were to log out and do it again it would prompt me this time this is a chrome bug that I've seen for the last week basically after you've run lighthouse for some reason it kind of bleeds into things so now if we look at good beers you'll see there's actually an error down here um, about cores and the reason for that is spring security isn't quite aware of the cross origin annotation as far as I know and so you can create a cores filter as a workaround and then you can specify where it's from um, you'll notice we also say that it can allow credentials it allows all methods all headers 
you might want to lock these down for your application, but this is just a demo. Restart the Spring Boot API. I'll open this in an incognito window so we don't get the bleeding. We do have to log in, and you'll notice we actually tried to go directly to that beer list, and it redirected us to Okta. Let's open our console. So we're not getting that cores error, but we actually aren't sending an access token either. So on the client, we need to go back into this beer list, and we need to send that access token. So you can see we specify headers and an authorization header or bearer, and it passes in that access token. So now if we refresh, or we don't even have to refresh, everything's working as expected. So another thing I wanted to show you is CSS Grid. So there's a cool feature where you can actually go and use CSS Grid to lay out everything in, uh, in columns. And so you can do three columns, you can do two columns, um, there is a way to do autofill and make it more responsive so it adjusts to your browser window. And then you can wrap the beer components or the beer blocks with that grid. And it'll lay them out in a nice grid format. So you can see them all side by side there. So this has been a screencast showing you how to get started with Spring Boot and View. The GitHub repo for this is on Okta Developer Spring Boot View example. You can find me on Twitter. My handle is mrabel. You can also find me on LinkedIn. There I am. You can find me on Rabel Designs, which is my blog. Friends don't let friends write authentication. And finally, we have a YouTube channel. And we'd love you to subscribe to it. Thank you for listening and watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.